think that was it. And here we have the old rag joint steering shaft. All right, uh, today's show is going to be peculiar. If you've ever wondered about your steering shaft, your lower intermediate steering shaft, this video is for you. If you drive a GM vehicle with the infamous rag joint, this video is for you. If you've ever wanted to get rid of that rag joint in favor of a nice, strong, universal joint, this video is for you. What's going on, friends? My name is Jimmy here on One Road, and today we have a very peculiar video for you. If you're familiar with the channel, you'll know about my 1995 GMC Suburban that I've been slowly building as an overland rig. And it seems like that list never ends, right? And the latest addition to that list is the entire front end, right? I'm talking about the upper and lower control arms on both sides, ball joints and bushings. I'm talking about the entire steering system, the tie rods, the idler arm, pitman arm, the steering gearbox, and the steering shaft. So basically everything, right? It's not gonna be cheap for sure because I'm not gonna get your typical you know, factory replacement parts. I plan on getting higher end parts where available, like for example, the kryptonite stuff, and for example, a redhead steering gearbox, and for example, something like a Borgeson steering shaft, which I, I have right here. This guy right here, made in the USA, has a universal joint, no rag joint, and it looks beautiful. That being said, this video is Peculiar. We're gonna keep using that word, peculiar. That steering shaft was one of the first things to come in, and so I decided, you know what? Let's just get in the shop, install that thing, right? It's just two bolts. It's one bolt on the top and one bolt on the bottom. Simple, right? Well, it should be. Just wait till you see this. Yeah, today's the day we lose the rag joint. Yes, you heard that right. Today is the day that this 1995 GMC Suburban officially loses its rag joint. I'm talking about the rag joint that exists on the bottom of the steering shaft right where it mates up to the steering gearbox. For some reason, back with these GMT 400 platforms, instead of a U-joint, they decided upon a rag joint. I'm assuming it has something to do with vibration and it actually seems like it's worked out pretty well. This truck is from 1995 and that rag joint is still intact, and I don't really have too much to complain about with the steering of my truck. So why am I doing this? Well, every now and again, I do feel and hear a clunking sound when I turn my wheel driving really slowly. Now, to be completely honest with you, I don't know if that rag joint is to blame, but if you follow the channel, you'll know that I'm about to embark upon a full rebuild of the front end of this truck. Does it absolutely need it? No. Do I wanna do it? Yeah. This is the original steering shaft to the truck. You can see the single bolt here that holds the top of the shaft in. And if we look down towards the bottom of the shaft, we can see the other single bolt that holds it to the gearbox. These GM factory steering shafts do have this dust boot that you do need to move out of the way. And they are simply held in with this plastic collar that fits around this nut here. And one thing I'm gonna do before I start any of this work is to ensure that my wheels are pointed as straight as possible. And the other thing I'm gonna do is tie off this steering wheel so that when I remove the steering shaft, this thing has no chance of spinning. There we go. Maybe a little something like that. Now this truck does have a steering wheel lock, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Now that I'm ready to go, I have my 3 8 ratchet with a six inch extension and an 11 millimeter socket. And all I have to do is fish this down there and get it on the bolt. And now that we're on the bolt, I can begin to loosen it up. Ugh. Ugh. Yep, that thing is tight. Okay, we got it. Okay, I am taking this bolt out all the way. That ought to help the situation. Okay, with that bolt gone, it looks like that's all we needed. There we go. I think that was it. All right, we are officially separated. Now I can work on this bolt. I've got a 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench. I'm gonna put it right on the nut. There we go and just loosen this thing up. Got it? 
And I'll save these because I'll have to reuse them with the new steering shaft. Yep. And here we have the old rag joint steering shaft. Here I have both steering shafts right next to each other. Both of the ends here that attach to that upper steering column are relatively the same. The difference is when you get down here towards the bottom. You can see on this new steering shaft, we have a universal joint. And on this factory steering shaft, we have what's called a rag joint. And it is called a rag joint because if you look closely, it is a bunch of layers of rubber and some kind of fabric that are all sandwiched together. Now this probably does a fantastic job at reducing vibrations from the wheels up through the steering wheel. But I would imagine that due to its age, it could probably definitely be replaced. Now this new Borgeson steering shaft seems like a really nice unit. This thing is made in the USA, and it has this really big, thick U-joint down here. So I'm going to go ahead and start to fit this thing and make sure that it'll work. Man, dude, that, that just doesn't seem like it's on there. Well, this sucks. Oh, gosh. Well, we have a problem. I just got off the phone with Borgeson, and it seems that this steering shaft isn't going to work. Let me tell you why. If you take a look at the end of this splined section coming out of the gearbox, you can see there's a, well, I guess we'll call it a pin sticking out of the end of there. Well, that pin is causing a problem. I've now fully seated the new steering shaft, and you can see that it's not going on very far. That pin is actually preventing this shaft from going on any further. And as you can tell, it does need to go on quite a bit more. And unfortunately, what I thought was going to be a very simple two-bolt installation, turns out it's not going to be quite so simple. Okay, I'm going to try to show and explain quickly exactly why this isn't going to work and what they could do to make this work exactly the way I think it should. So here's the upper portion of this steering column. And you can see there's only one way this thing goes in. Just like that. And with my front wheels perfectly straight, you can see the position of this output shaft here coming out of the gearbox. The flat side is straight up. Unfortunately, this pin here is preventing the new shaft from sliding all the way on. But even if I were to get rid of this pin, say by cutting it off, and the new shaft was able to slide farther on, I still have no slot for that set screw, which is sitting dead center on this flat portion here. If I were to just tighten that set screw down on that flat portion of the output shaft, and that set screw ever came loose, well, that steering shaft could slide right off of there. Here is that set screw and it definitely needs some kind of slot to lock into. Now looking inside the end of this steering shaft you can see exactly where that pin was making contact. So why not have a hole there right in the center so that pin can slide right on through and this steering shaft could slide all the way on no modification needed. And the other thing why is there only one set screw? There should be one here right on top and maybe another one right here about 90 degrees over. With another set screw 90 degrees off from the top one, we could get that set screw to line up right in this factory notch here. So I think with those two simple modifications to this steering shaft, this truly could be a drop-in system. But at the moment, it's not. And again, for some people, that may not be that big of a deal. Here's why it's a big deal to me. I plan on replacing my factory gearbox here with a redhead unit. That redhead unit is expensive. I don't want to go drilling into this output shaft or using a file to put a notch in there. I just don't want to do anything like that. Number one, I don't want to screw something up. And number two, I don't know if that voids the warranty on that thing. It probably does. Now I'm going to jump out here and say this is all to my best understanding. Of course, I could be getting some of those details totally wrong. But from my understanding, this is what's going on. And that's why I don't think I'm going to actually be using this brand new, beautiful, made in the USA steering shaft. I think I'm just going to have to find a factory rag joint and just go with that. I just love it when a plan doesn't come together. Okay, okay, okay. It's not the end of the world. Stuff happens. Things don't fit. This is just kind of what happens in the aftermarket world. You buy new parts for your truck that aren't exactly factory spec. Some stuff isn't going to quite work out right. Some stuff's not going to fit right. Some stuff is going to require modification in order to make it work. That steering shaft 
totally could have worked. I could have cut off the end of that torsion bar and let it seat a lot deeper. I could have somehow, you know, made it work with the set screw and all that. I could have made it work. Like I was saying in the video, the problem is, is I don't want to void the warranty of my redhead steering box. And I also don't want to have to modify that thing in any way. I want a steering shaft that's literally going to fit factory, like fit on the factory gearbox, which is what the redhead gearbox is. In case you guys don't know, the redhead gearboxes are just simply a remanufactured gearbox, but it's like to a higher standard. So the tolerances and everything are, are much better. So that is an entirely factory gearbox. So the steering shaft that I get for that needs to fit on there without any modifications. That, that's just my view. I really do wish this steering shaft would have worked out. The thing seems heavy duty. It seems like it's made incredibly well. That U-joint on there just seems like it'll last forever. I just wasn't comfortable modifying the gearbox in order to make it work. That's all. So. I hope this video, even though it was peculiar, I hope it entertained you. I hope you got some laughs out of it, some information possibly. And uh, you know, if you did, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And if you're watching this this far and you're not subscribed to the channel, hey, consider subscribing. My name is Jimmy, the channel is One Road, and I will see you in the next one. Well, uh... That wasn't supposed to happen like that.